Every child can learn and has the right to the same opportunities as others, despite the difficulties they face. A pleasant day to everyone. I am Maria Sofia Cabalang, the first reporter of Group 1. Our topic is all about special education. I know that all of you are already familiar or, or know this, but allow us to enlighten or notify you. This presentation assists or help you to have a better understanding to those children who have a difficulties or disabilities. So, let's start! So class, as what you have heard earlier, our topic is all about special education. Alright? So now, here is the definition of special education. Well class, special education is a form of learning provided the learner with exceptional needs such as learners with mental disabilities or mental challenges. So now class, here are some objectives of special education. Again, objectives. And the first one is aid learners to acquire necessary social skills, emotional literacy to live and participate in school, home, and community life as properly as possible. And the second one is support and facilitate parent involvement or participation in the special education process. And the third one is provide learners with special needs, appropriate educational services within the mainstream of basic education. Lastly, ensuring that learners with disabilities are provided with an environment that allows them to be educated effectively. Now class, I will present to all of you the policies and guidelines for special education. Article 4, School Admission and Organization of Classes. So, let's start. Section 1, Learners with special needs shall enjoy the equality of access to formal education and alternative learning system. So, class, it means that Children with difficulties is definitely an, not an hindrance in reaching their goals in life. It is not an excuse that they should be avoided. Am I right? Alright, so we must not let them to feel that they seem living against the world. We should show and feel them that they are belong no matter who and what they are. And we should not let their disabilities define themselves because they truly deserve acceptance and equal treatment and they have freedom and right to access to all education. Article 4, 1.1 Every school division shall organize special classes and provide special services for children with special needs. So here, class, children with difficulties must receive um, appropriate free public education in the least restrictive environment. And also class, it is necessary to meet those needs. The school must give time and extra patience for the, for the child to reach out the learnings of the children without special needs. For the continuation, Article 4, 1.2. All schools at the pre-elementary, elementary, secondary, and tertiary levels shall admit children and youth with special needs in an inclusive setup. So, it means that a students with special needs have a right to be joined are involved with children without these difficulties and they have a freedom to experience to have an inclusive classroom wherein learners with and without difficulties learn together. Article 4, 1.3 Educational for the child with special needs shall be made available as early as possible. So, 
In here, students with special needs must always be prioritized and they should provide them extra time, support, and especially effort. So, Article 4, 1.4, Free Elementary, Elementary, Secondary Education, and Post-Secondary Education courses shall be salient features of the formal education of children with special needs. So, class, every school should provide education to all learners with or without special needs. And they must have an opportunity to undergo formal education. So, class, listen and remember. We, as a, as a potential educator, we should be served as a role model in how to accept and love those children, specifically when they have difficulties. Article 4, 1.5 the school entrance age of a child with special needs to formal academic instruction shall follow the current regulate of the Department of Education. So, the Department of Education has an implementation regarding the starting age and different grade levels. So, class, the school should follow the said implementation or memorandum. Continuation. Article 4, 1.6. Only individuals with special needs shall be eligible for enrollment in special schools. Each appropriate placement shall be considered for effective teaching learning. So those children um, with special needs has their own schools that are appropriate for their skills and potential. Following that, Article 4, 1.7. Adults with special needs who have undertaken the functional basic curriculum and could not pursue the elementary, secondary, tertiary levels shall be placed in transition vocational programs or sheltered workshop for self-sufficiency and independent living. So here in 1.7, it means that um, adults that the children, it's adults with special needs who could not avail in any school level should be able to have the chance to enroll in vocational courses and program. That's nice, right? So lastly, Article 4, 1.8, special educational provisions shall be made available to children with special needs during treatment or confinement in hospitals. So here, special education must provide the needs of children with special needs during their emergency treatments. In class, school must always be prepared for the possible conditions of a child. So that's all class. That's all the policies and guidelines of special education. So now, here is Mom Christine Joy Flores for the continuation of our topic. Thank you, Mom Pia. Before I continue our topic, let me introduce myself first. I am Christine Joy Flores, the second reporter of Group 1. So, all right, let's continue our topic. The philosophy of special education. The basic philosophy of special education is that all people have the ability to learn, regardless of their particular disabilities. Every child with special needs has a right to an educational program that is suitable to his needs. Special education shares with regular education basic responsibilities of the educational system to fulfill the right of the child to develop to his full potential. The philosophy of special education it enables students to grow to their fullest potential by providing a appropriate education designed to fit their unique needs. As we know na ang bata with special needs have different needs, unique needs, and the philosophy of education designed to fit their unique needs. 
it achieve full integration and participation in society of people with disabilities by ensuring equal opportunity and access to and excellence in education, employment, and community living. A comprehensive, inclusive program for children with special needs has the following components. The first one is the child fund. The second is the assessment. The third is the placement. Fourth is the curriculum modifications. And the fifth is the parental involvement. The first one is the child fund. This is locating where these children are through the family survey, advocacy campaigns, and networking with local health workers. The children with special needs who are not in school shall be listed. These children shall be visited by special education, SPED teachers, and parents should be convinced to enroll their children in SPED centers or school nearest their home. The child find is a continuous process of public awareness, activities, screening, and evaluation designed to locate, identify, and evaluate children with disabilities. It is also a process used to determine if a child needs special education, services, and support. Next one is the assessment. This is a continuous process of identifying the strengths and weaknesses of the child through the use of formal and informal tools for proper grade placement. Existing SPED centers in the division shall assess regular schools in the assessment process. The assessment involves collecting information about a student for the purpose of making decisions. It is a process used to determine a child's specific learning strengths, weaknesses, and needs. It also improves learning of a child. The next one is the program. The next one is the program options. The program options regular schools with or without trained SPED teachers shall be provided educational services to children with special needs. These schools shall access educational services for SPED centers or SPED trained teachers. The following are the program options. Options. The first one is the self-contained class for children with similar disabilities which can be monograde or multigrade handled by a trained SPED teacher. It is a classroom like sa regular classroom na pinapasukan natin but in this classroom lahat ng batang may the same disabilities is sama-sama and the trained SPED teacher is the responsible for the instruction of all academic subject. The next one is the inclusion or placement of the child with disabilities and general education or regular class where he or she learns with his or her peers under a regular teacher or SPED trained teacher who addresses the child's needs. A child with disabilities is pumapasok sa regular school. They go to school with their regular peers while providing them with the individual instruction and support that they need. The last one is a resource room program where the child with disabilities shall be pulled out from a general education or regular class and shall report to a SPED teacher who provides small group or one or one instruction and appropriate interventions for these children. This, a child with disabilities, is wala sa classroom, wala sa regular classroom. They report to a SPED teacher who provides small group, 5, 4, 3, or 2 students, or one or one instruction like tutor,
one-on-one -on -one instruction and appropriate interventions for these children. The curriculum modifications. This shall be implemented in the forms of adaptions and accommodations to foster optimum learning based on individual needs and potentials. The curriculum modification, it is a key strategy for responding to the needs of a learners with diverse learning styles and disabilities. It involves processes by modifying, changing, adapting, extending, and var varying teaching methodologies, teaching strategies assessment, strategies, and the content of the curriculum. The last one is the parental involvement. This plays a vital role in preparing the children in academic, moral, and spiritual development. Parents shall involve themselves in observing children's performance, volunteering to work in the classroom as a teacher aide, and providing support to other parents. District and school-based special education and regular teachers administrators and parents need to collaboratively develop and facilitate the most effective program for children with disabilities. The parent involvement, the community, the teacher, especially the parents, they share the responsibility. They work together. They united para sa pangangailangan, para sa ikakabuti at sa kakainlad ng bata, a child with special needs. Thank you, Ma'am Christine. Before I discuss the topic that is assigned to me, first, I will introduce myself. I am Miss Nicole K. Eager Salia of Group 1 and the third presenter. For the prominent personalities of development under the historical figure of special education, here they are. The first one is Mr. Henry Goddard, followed by Mr. Cyril Bird, followed by Mr. Donald M. Baer, Mr. Samuel Gridley Hoe, and Mr. James Hinslow. Prominent personalities of development under the historical figures in special education. The first one is Mr. Henry Goddard. He brought binate scale to America in 1908. He participated in writing of the first U.S. law requiring special education for children with intellectual disability in 1911. He also developed the Army Alpha and Beta group tests. Mr. Goddard chose as one of the top five for intellectual disability because he has a significant contribution to the field in his time. His lasting legacy in special education through his work in writing the first law addressing special education in Congress. Next is Mr. Cyril Bird. He is the UK one of the most influential psychologists on his time. He also the psychologist knighted in 1946 and developed the 11 plus program. Mr. Bird is working with his identical twins. His work credibility was questioned and it is compared with scientists on his time and viewed as very flawed. But then, the view of psychologists have changed in terms of genetic factors, measure of intellectual is complex, environmental factors, self-contained classroom are replaced with inclusion. Mr. Bird chosen as top 5 for intellectual disability because he has incredible contribution during his time in the field of intellectual disabilities and to his initiative work on factor analysis. Next is 
Mr. Donald M. Baer. He was the director of the Department of Human Development and Family Life at the University of Kansas from 1955 until 2002. He also applied behavior analysis. Mr. Baer studied people with severe intellectual disability. Methods include applied behavior analysis, which deal with socially significant factors. This applied behavior analysis was first set forth on his writing. Bayer applied behavior analysis remain effective because its method work and could be experimentally verified and replicated. He raised the moral in the entire field and aided efforts in the institutionalization. Mr. Donald M. Baer chose a staff five for intellectual disability because the quality of his work on socially important behaviors. Other researchers were able to draw on his work for legislation, litigation, and administrative action. He also an advocate in that because he practiced good science on socially relevant topics. Next is Mr. Samuel Gridley Howe. He expanded the Perkins Institute for the Blind in 1848 to include individuals with intellectual disability. He predicted the danger of residential institution and this institution spread across the U.S. despite of his warning. Mr. Howe noted for his work with the blind, he brought blind students before state legislature in order to obtain funding for his school. Howe known as for teaching a blind the act mute Laura Bridgman to read, write, and hold communication with others. Mr. Samuel Gridley Howe chose a staff five for intellectual disability because he was the first to found the school for intellectual disabilities. The school was replicated nationally and despite his warnings against it. And for the last one is Mr. James Hinshelwood. He was the first physician to recommend a specific instructional approach for students with dyslexia. He also do the first attempt in the literature to explain word blindness and to establish a scientific basis. According to Mr. James, dyslexia case can be more often more than one in a family, also similar to adults who had lost the ability to read due to the brain injury. He also believed that dyslexia may be a result of disease, birth injury, or defective development of embryo. Mr. James Hinselwood chose a staff five for learning disability because he was also concerned with terminology that word blindness later came to be termed as dyslexia. He also the first to recognize that the different instructional approach for students with written language disorder is necessary. He also the first one to recognize what we called how dyslexia as medical condition. Thank you, Ma'am Keo. So now, before we start to explain our last topic, I am Mariela Santillan, the last reporter of the Group 1. I hope after this presentation, you will learn a lot regarding to those students or children with disabilities. Now, here are some proponents of special education. The proponents of special education in the field of psychology. The first proponent, the Council for Exceptional Children. The Council for Exceptional Children, or CEC, has worked on matters that is actually related to special education for many years and concerned with making sure that there are people to speak on behalf of students with difficulties. The purpose of Council for Exceptional Children is to advocate for appropriate governmental policies, set professional standards, provide professional developments, and help professionals to obtain conditions and resources necessary for effective professional practice. What are the benefits of Council for Exceptional Children? 
In addition to encouraging the professional growth of its members and special educators, it encourages research in education of children with exceptionalities and assists in the dissemination of research findings. Second proponent, the National Education Association. National Education Association making sure that the schools have an enough money to help students with disabilities. The purpose of national education is that to advocate for educational professionals and to unite their members and the nation to fulfill the promise of public education to prepare every student to succeed in a diverse and independent world. And now, their benefits is to help the members live better leveraging the association group for chasing forward to provide members with high-quality investment, insurance, credit, discount, produce, and consumer services. The last proponent, the Federation. Federation for Students with Special Needs is an organization that works to keep parents informed about special education. What are the purpose of Federation? The Federation empowers families so that they have the information and resources they need for their families. We work with families with children from birth to adulthood, providing individual assistance, training, and leadership developments and support. What are the benefits of Federation? The Federation for Children with Special Needs is a non-profit organization dedicated to providing information, support, and assistance to parents of children with disabilities, their professional partners, and their local communities. All people, including those with disabilities, commit Federation to listening and learning from families about their special needs to encouraging full participation in community life. Once again, I am Marielle Santillan and this is the presentation of the Group 1. I hope you learn a lot and we thank you all for your patiently and listening to our presentation.